I'm Stephen Breck Reed. I teach Christian scriptures at uh, Truett Seminary at Baylor University, and I'm part of the Sankofa Institute. The Sankofa concept is returning and moving forward simultaneously. It's a, a wonderful picture because you see sort of with the head turned back, yet still moving forward. And it is that process of recovery and progress simultaneously. Part of what's going on and part of what the Institute is about is a sense that the Christian church and the black church in particular is able to move forward when it's able to reach back and always be attentive to tradition. Not tradition as a sort of chain, but tradition as a propeller that lets you recover and move forward at the same time. I was at the Institute of Black Catholic Studies at uh, Xavier University in New Orleans, uh, and I taught there a couple summers, and uh, Dr. Walker was there. Uh, when she moved uh, to Texas, uh, she gave me a call, and uh, I've never said no to uh, Dr. Walker, and so when she asked, I said, of course. Also, the chance to work with uh, the people at the Sankofa Institute uh, is a real blessing, and, and so that made the yes work even better. The Sankofa Institute is for people who have a passion and yearning to get to know black church tradition in the 21st century. Uh, because it really is paying attention to that tradition going back to the beginnings, but also how that context plays itself out in the 21st century church. One of the things that, that continues to excite me about Sankofa is its location. San Antonio is a remarkable resource. It is a city of ethnic diversity. It is a city of financial and economic diversity. It is a city that has great ministries and it is a city in need of great ministries. And so in many regards, you couldn't ask for a better place to do what Sankofa does um, because of the way it will always be paying attention to an international conversation. I fell in love with biblical studies as a young seminarian. Um, it was a, I had taken college courses in Bible, and, I, and the man who taught those courses was a very devout, boring guy. Um, but when I got to seminary, I had just an exuberant teacher. And, you know, I remember it was the first week of seminary. I said, I want to grow up to be just like him. And so I got started reading Hebrew and uh, working in Old Testament, and that's how that happened. One of the things, uh, when I was in college, I did a directed study. A directed study is a course where you get college credit, you work with a professor, but you get to pick the research area. I was a young college student, I thought, I know enough, I can design a course in theology. Uh, and so I read some stuff by Cohn. Uh, I, I read a little of this and a little of that. But one of the things I, I came to the sense was that I wanted to understand theology when, when Anselm talks about faith-seeking understanding. I wanted to see faith as including my mother and I. That's how I got really interested in, in black biblical studies. Because much of the material I was reading in theology was written as though my mother and I 
were not part of the equation. It really sort of presupposed uh, a worldview and a social location that wasn't our location. So even as a college uh, student, I, I started to care. No, I didn't have language to talk about it much as black biblical studies. I had language to talk about it as my mom and Aunt Maddie and Uncle Bobby and making room for us in the church and in the theology of the church. I grew up in Dayton, Ohio uh, in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, desegregation in Ohio was just sort of an, a new thing. Uh, my dad uh, was an alcoholic and uh, one of his drinking buddies said that uh, the, the white lady who lived next to him went to a nice church that was open and would allow black people to come. I say this because in, uh, in the Church of Brethren it was a non-drinking communion and so I've always found it a little ironic that my dad's drinking buddy was our avenue into uh, the congregation. Uh, and so um, my parents wanted something other than uh, the Black Baptist Church they were going to, and so we went to the Church of the Brethren, uh, a little outside of our neighborhood. And the Church of the Brethren is uh, an Anabaptist group, uh, somewhat like the Mennonites. Um, my social location, um, my dad, uh, as I said, was an alcoholic. Uh, he had jobs installing water softeners. He worked in factories. Uh, my mom uh, worked at the post office. Uh, so I grew up in a pretty working class uh, family. I had aunts and uncles who were uh, public school teachers. It wasn't until I went to college that I realized they pay you money to teach college. I thought that was better than working. And so that, that's what I've done. So my own social location has roots in black working class, uh, but those are just roots. I mean, that's, you know, I haven't, I haven't had to work uh, as it were. The Civil Rights Movement uh, had a significant impact in, in my life in the sense that it provided opportunities. Universities started to uh, say they needed to have more diversity than, than they had, uh, which opened up, opened up some doors for me in uh, really more in PhD work than in, in seminary. Um, but it was also an interesting time because we as a family, a working class, wanted to be respectable family, uh, liked the aspirations of Dr. King, uh, but were a little bit scandalized. Going to jail is not a good thing, and so um, that was a, an interesting sort of rub. Also, uh, I'm just old enough to feel like I wish I would have been a little bit older so I could have participated in the civil rights. And, and so you get a, a, certain, uh, a certain remorse because you, you really weren't, I, I wasn't old enough to be you know, at lunch tables and, and things like that. Uh, but I'm the beneficiary of that stuff. So it, it's a somewhat complicated age to be. You know, neither really young enough to be a young person during the civil rights movement, uh, nor, uh, you know, old enough to be on the other side of it. Uh, in terms of the elders, one of the things that made uh, Sister Eddie's uh, proposal compelling, these were folks I knew and I liked. Uh, I had met uh, Dr. Hopkins when we were both uh, 
he was at the University of Santa Clara. I was at Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley. Uh, so we got to know each other. Uh, Dr. Kirk Dugan and I knew each other from Austin Seminary time. Uh, Dr. Hayes and I knew each other from the Institute of Black Catholic Studies. Uh, Dr. Knoll and I knew each other from when we were, uh, when I was in, at uh, Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, and he was across the bay at San Francisco Theological Seminary. Um, Dr. Smith, I knew when he still is at uh, Allen Temple, uh, a prominent black church when uh, we were there uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, my wife preached uh, at uh, Allen Temple uh, during one of the special services for Good Friday. So part of the, the joy of being with that group is I already had some friendships and relationships and this is an opportunity to sort of grow those friendships. Twenty years from now, I would like to say that if you look at prominent churches in Texas and the Southwest, you will see that as head of staff or members of the staff to have Sankofa graduates. When you look at San Antonio and what sorts of things are happening to change San Antonio to become an even more vibrant city where all of its participants share in the economic wealth of San Antonio, I would hope that at the head of the relevant nonprofits are going to be Sankofa people. I think the Sankofa Institute is here uh, to place to help people be change makers who can use Sankofa principles of recovery and moving forward in ways that transform the churches and communities they're in. If you want to be a Sankofa scholar, you're in for a wonderful time. You're not in for an easy time. Part of what really energizes us about Sankofa is this is a spiritual discipline and we take that quite seriously um, and you're going to read more than you thought you would you're going to write more than you thought you would you're going to think more than you thought you would and you're going to pray more than you thought you would and so part of the process is you being a more robust spiritual and theological person on the other end of that. And that can be a good thing.